major minor signature Django licks. He might use this. Welcome to today's lesson. It's Django Challenge. It's swing guitars. Let's get started. Just try to try to capture a lot of that for you uh, in those in those PDFs so that you can just browse through it. I usually say this. So I usually say it's very very valuable just to learn the melody, to work on the rhythm, to work out you know getting it so it feels good and it sounds like music. And then of course chords. You know the improvisation is also the other aspect again. But generally I always start with the melody on these classes in the workshop for this particular class arrangement of it which is basically from a fake book but as you listen to swing guitars guitar singular sometimes I think I've seen as guitars um, as you listen to it you're gonna hear a lot of improvisation off the basic theme so I'm gonna stress learning the basic theme which is I'm gonna push play <laughs> That's the A section. From there, you can kind of hint at the B section of what what's often played, but you will not hear it done the same way twice. The B, quite often on these songs, the B sections are improvised pretty freely, uh, but the A section is often played together or with an ensemble. You know, like. Uh, two people playing it kind of uh, together, <laughs> uh, sometimes loosely together. Um, so that's what I like to do is to go through the melody and go through the chords and then just discuss some improv ideas. You know, learning ukulele and guitar is very, very similar. So like the C would be here on the guitar on the eighth fret, but on the uke, it's the third fret. So not to get too involved with this, if you see, <laughs> if you see guitar notation, and it says eighth fret, you can subtract five, and then you're on the third fret. So if you see eight, 10, you could go three, five, three. And it's uh, the same thing on the uke, on the, on the top four strings of the guitar. I, and for uke, I do recommend low G string, okay? The, having the low G instead of high strung G. I'm gonna get started here with these chord shapes here so you can learn it, and again, for the uke players, I hope you know a basic C major chord. Don't worry about C6, but for guitar players, I'm gonna suggest C6. So you get this chord. And then E flat dim, D minor seven, and I'm gonna go to G9, okay? So I'm just gonna get us started here. I won't go through all of them, um, but... sound very great. Sorry about that. It's so loud here. I'll turn it down a little bit. But this is just to kind of show you again the process of, of what I'm seeing on the paper. C6, E flat dims. It says C, but you want to play a C6 chord. And I also passed out some worksheets that contain these four note chord voicings. If they're new for you, definitely go through that routine of what I call the grip chord routine to where you work through these six and these fifth string roots. C6. E flat dim seven, D minor seven, G nine. It says G seven, G nine is great for swing. So I'm gonna go through this slowly. And that way I can say if you're a ukulele player, I've got a good trick for you. Even though I like just a C major triad for the first chord. You can sw you can take these guitar shapes when they're on the six string root. This is for the ukulele and for the guitar. It's a great trick, great hack. You can take this note on the six string and put it on the first string because they're the same string, E and the E. It just flips up high. So this is a C6. Take the bass note here and put it on the first string, the six string, and put it on the first string. Now this is C6. So this is E flat dim seven. I'll get a little bit closer here so you can see. E flat dim seven. Take the bass note and put up high. So again, this would be 10, 11, 10, 11 if you're thinking tabs. So if you're on the ukulele, just subtract five. 
<laughs> so now you're going to be, um, I have to, I have to think my math here, five, six, five, six on, on the uke for this chord here, if you're wondering. So it'd be five, six, five, six. And that's my trick. So this would be on the uke, five, 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 which would sound like this on the guitar. And then G9. Uh, that, that's a sixth string, fifth string root, but so you get something like this. This is really cool, actually. Okay, great trick, great hack. But on the guitar, we're going to play the bass notes. By the way, if you want to know that G nine on the uke, it would be four five five five. And again, just feel free to type in the chat, and I'll. You have any questions so i'm just going to jot this down i won't write it for the all of them just this one and this is not necessarily universal by any means this is just what i like i would do okay in case these shapes are new so i would do this again c6 again i'm not going to write write out the grids but it will be these will be available to you um so again on the ukulele though for the first chord i would just do c major triad Put on the guitar. Okay. And that's now we're gonna come to this chord. C you could do a C triad, or for rhythm guitar, it's nice to add a six and then C7. We do want that C7, so that's important. That turns it into a dominant chord. But on the uke again, C major triad is just fine. And then F major to F minor, that's the, this is important because this is a dominant chord. The C, the one chord turns to a dominant chord, which is the, the five of the four. Um, so hopefully you understand the theory of it. If not, it's okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna do and I'm gonna do an F major triad to F minor triad bar chord style. Nothing fancy. Django often just did bar chords like that, just barring across, or just three note shapes is what Django would actually do more of. So at, oh, I'm not sure I did that was supposed to be F minor, but got okay, erased. And I, I'm going to say this too, there's a lot of variations off of rhythm changes, so this is just one variation on it. If you want more, check out I Got Rhythm, check out my studies on that, and again, if you're on Patreon, check out all my rhythm changes studies. I, I did send some PDFs to you all. Uh, check out Django's tune, Swing 42, that's a, another great study. Um, there's also a lot of value in learning that melody, which some of you learn, it goes like this. And you can apply that to this song. You, you know, you can take licks and ideas. So that's where I'm saying, learn a bunch of songs that go one, six, two, five, rhythm changes essentially, or some variation of that. So many Django songs use that Belleville uh, Swing 42. Belleville's in a different key, Swing 42. Um, and let me just finish this here. The first chat. No, I won't be adding to it uh, on the PDFs. It'll just be on the sound slice. Uh, to answer Dallas's question, I'm, I'm not gonna send on another PDF, but f from the sound slice, you can print it out yourself. But I'm not gonna resend it, so, um, but you can print it. <laughs> After I'm done with it, then I'll, I'm gonna put it into, uh, I'll just do this, and you'll see, I think, yep, allow printing, so you can just print it out. And I'm gonna do a uke version too, just out of courtesy, if you, in case you don't know those chords. Um, some of the chords that I like to do, the fancier, might be, might be fancier chords, um, instead of 
open cowboy chords or anything like that. But on the uke, I probably would stay down in the open position a little bit more. Uh, this can be the the turn. This is a turnaround. There's gonna be a lot of different turnarounds. This was just in the fake book, so I just left it as a minor four chord, kind of a sweet sound. And actually, I, I did listen to it and, and play along with Django with it, and that's what I'm hearing with the band. Uh, sometimes this chord is diminished though, and Django is often thinking F sharp diminished seven like this. <laughs> If you've never played rhythm changes, then you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But oftentimes, when it goes to the four chord, after the four chord, generally it's minor four and then the one. But a sharp four, meaning F sharp diminish, sounds really bluesy and really nice. Um, so you just have to kind of use your ear and, and listen. But when you're playing with people, you kind of never know if they're going to go to the sharp four dim or the minor. In, in one of the recordings I was listening to earlier, Django goes to the sharp four dim, but the band goes to the minor. Still sounds great, so <laughs> don't worry about it. Just be strong and confident with what your idea is and it's all gonna work out. It'd be nice if, if everybody said, okay, we're gonna just do the diminish or we're gonna do just the minor. But on gigs and stuff, or in jam sessions, it's not always like that. Okay, so back to the F minor chord here. I'm just gonna leave it as a, um, well, wait, I'm sorry. Let's see where I got lost here. Oh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave this as an F minor try. Uh, no, let's do F minor six, so C six. F minor, no, yeah, F minor triad, it's definitely easier. Uh, sometimes I do this C six chord, this is what I call the a la Django shape, C six, and then F six, minor six, and then back to C six. And that's a really nice little hack there. Let me see if I wanna try that with you guys. Yeah, let's do that in this chord just to make sure you're getting some new voicings that you may not be using um, and to be honest I'm when I'm playing that's why I have to try it out because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do until I you know think about it in context but um, that doesn't help you very much <laughs> yeah, so, so this is a C6 chord here is that right let me see I did I just draw G9 yeah I do G9 so hold on Jerry, either Jerry or Keith is gonna catch that. I know, I know. You guys are my my editors. I appreciate it. So um, that's good. Uh, so and then this is a great hack. I call it a hack because it's like a it's a it's a chord shape type of a hack. C six, F minor six, same shape, but you just move your hand all the fingers down one string respectively, same shape. And that's what, that's generally when I call like a hack when you can do that. So definitely, definitely, if this is new for you, try this four, sorry, one to the minor four out. Um, let me write this out for you. Go ahead and type in the chat if you, if you want to. Um, right now, so again, the sound slices will be available I'll send you out the link following when I'm finished with it. I won't, I will, I'll come, well actually I, I might send it out, but it might not be done with all the grids, but you can refer back to it and it'll get updated. <laughs> so I'm just, right now I'm just going through the basic shapes for you to get you started. If this playing gypsy jazz and swing is new for you, these are some great shapes to get started with. Um, and again, for the uke players, I'll also have the version of Sound Slice with that available to you. Just for the uke, but right now, um, you're looking probably at the PDF that I sent out. And I'm gonna go back to a G9 chord instead of G7. G7 is just fine though, but I love this ninth shape. Very, very common. So again, you would do something like this, C6, F minor six, C6, G9. So again, backtracking a little bit further to measure five here, this is where all the action happens. I'm gonna go very slowly, C6, C7, F major, F minor, C sharp, or C6, F minor 6, C6, G9, and top. I know you can't see it on the sound slice, sorry. 
but it sets. And then here it is, C, measure five, C6, C7, F major, F minor, C6, F minor six, and second ending C6, C7, B section. I took the second ending that time there just to pull us into the B section. I'm just walking you through the progression, the chords. It's a very, very common movement. Um, but for this song, you know, it's, we do have some specific things. So for that C6 here, um, and there is that F sharp dim seven that I'm just talking about. So let's go ahead and take you into the B section. Um, this shape again is very cool. It's a C6 chord, but the fifth is in the bass, meaning a G note is in the bass. So you could say C6 slash G, but still just a C6 chord. Um, and then the C7, I'm just going to do the basic four note voicing here. And then now the F6 chord, I'm going to do just this. Just a plain old F6 like this. F6 is equivalent to, if you're on the ukulele, D minor seven. Five, 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 five. Ten, 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 ten on the guitar. So again, you, guitar players, feel free to look at the uke stuff too, because that will get you into some chord melody style or chordal soloing up on the high on the high end of it too, because um, that's kind of I think that helps quite a bit. You can learn from each other from the, from the different arrangements there. Okay, so but for the guitar here, I'm going to write eight, ten, 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 ten. Ten. Let's go. Let's use all four strings. Why not? Like this. And then F sharp dim. And if this F sharp diminished seven is new for you, then here it is. Okay. The melody is on the sixth degree, you'll see, well, that's what you'll hear often. The F sharp dim is kind of a substitution for F7. Okay, it's kind of a bluesy. It kind of creates like a F7 flat nine flavor. Very, very common again to play a dim seven over in place of a dominant chord. So basically like the four chord in the key of C is F. So it's kind of like F6 and then F7. Kind of bluesy, the four chord again. Uh, on the ukulele, five six five six. That's the F sharp dim, and then back to C six. And I'm gonna just audition it to make sure it sounds, it feels good, and sounds good. I already know I'm gonna do the a la Django shape. Let me get the camera closer so you can see this F sharp dim C six. I'm going to go to D9, and then G9. I kept it relatively easy there. So the C6, again, I'm going to jot that down, and hopefully you've got it now. This is just one approach, one method. Again, you know, I always recommend being creative, meaning you might say, oh, I'm gonna do F6 down here. F sharp dim here. C6, nine here. Absolutely, just mess around with it, have fun. <laughs> I Unfortunately, I'm not able to write out, I can write out, you know, three different versions of it, but right now I'm just walking you through what I'm doing, what I'm feeling on the spot right now. So, um, I'm gonna adjust this, um, take out the A minor that is not needed here, and just go straight to D9. Uh, a minor is kind of a prep chord for D7, like we're gonna go to G, like a two five, but a lot of the rhythm players, they just 
don't. They just play the dominant chord. They omit the they omit the the minor. I hope this is not over anybody's head so far. Um, I'm just gonna keep on keep on going here. Uh, this should actually be G7 right here. Let me let me just scroll out here a little bit, and we're just gonna do G9. So you might have to. Um, well, I would again refer to this. This is in, in in as opposed to the lead sheet that I sent out earlier, which I start, which is basically this until I put the I'm putting the chords here for you now. So I would again refer back to this. Uh, this is going to be G seven. G is the five of C. So it's a really a great progression, kind of based off of I always say, "Lady, be good." Gershwin, you know, the Gershwin tune. These old tunes. That's that's how they compose a lot of these songs. Is they they just take progressions from popular songs, you know, from Gershwin and Cole Porter, whoever, and then uh, write own, their own tunes over it, so they can solo on it easily because they're common progressions. I'm not gonna say Django always did that. Django has some pretty wacky songs, but but in this case, this is fairly straightforward. I would say the A section is based off of rhythm changes. I got rhythm. And the B section, I always say, "Lady, be good for this, um, for this progression here." So it's a four sharp, four dim to the one, two dominant, and then the five. Let me get that G nine on there for you. Feel free to type in questions if you have any. I'm happy to address it. So that's why you're here. Um, let me get that G seven, that G nine. There's a lot of value with just taking one shape and sliding it around to, you know, like this D9. Slide it up to the G9. Okay, pretty easy. And then G7 sharp five. That's a sweet chord, actually. to the F sharp dim. I wanted a bluesy, even though it's supposed to be minor. But again, you know, just you gotta go by feel too. So um, I'm gonna draw this shape. F G7 sharp five. That means you sharp the five on a dominant chord. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna do just a G, that means augmented. But I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna make it an augmented triad. And that gives it the same sound. Meaning I'm omitting the flat seven. Okay, so you know, that's in that the melody here, but not a huge deal. It'd almost be better if I just omitted it. So look at that. Oh, hold on. Anyway, that was dramatic, but there, now it's gone. That's not even important. <laughs> it's too many chords. So again, just to get through this. And then the last A, it's just like the first A. So we're done with the chords. Um, what you can do for practice here is put on the metronome. I'm just showing you sound slice in case you haven't used it ever. I, I know many of you are here are new today, so I'm just showing you some practice techniques here. Um, put the metronome on like I just did. Um, let me make sure I save my work here. Um, and then... Time or not. You might say, oh, that's a little fast. Then you can slow it down.
and then we're off into solos, which is of course the fun part, but we still have to do the melody. Again, I'm just showing you how I would practice with this and you can uh, loop it, you can loop it all you want to just play with that until you get the chords down. You can slow it down if that was too fast. I'm changing, if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm changing the BPMs and then push play. be playing chords at 80% of the time. Well, unless you have your own, unless you're fronting your own trio, which I'm fortunate to get to do. So I don't play chords as much as I, as I usually should be doing, um, playing a lot of leads. Um, but I don't, I, I really feel playing chords is very important, just playing rhythm. Have fun with that. The last thing I want to talk about with chords is the articulation of this style, the Le Pomp style, where you're um, pumping these strings. Okay. You just want to make sure you press down after each chord, basically that you really actually lift after each chord. But it's almost like you're pressing as you're strumming to get the short quality on, on each quarter note. One, two, three, four, one, two. So if you can see, you can see, a lot of people are very dramatic about it. They even lift up their hands. I wouldn't, I generally don't do that, but I'll see some people do that. Um, but again, it's to get that short pump quality. So you don't want to hold it. You don't want this sound. You don't want it long. That doesn't swing. You want that short quality. Even at a fast tempo, that's harder. But at a, on a slow tempo, I'm going to demonstrate on a slow tempo. You can do this. Long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. In that case, you can hold down the first quarter note and then lift up on the after the second. So short, long, short, long, short long short that's kind of a medium slow or even a ballad tempo okay but i would get used to just making everything short of course then you got to get these chords down too another thing i like to do is i like to do a lot of bass line movement that's what Django did now i'm going to grab a pick here <laughs> Bass chord, bass chord, bass chord. Boom chuck, boom chuck. And notice that bass line. C, E flat, very bluesy. D, G, C, E flat, D, G. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the melody here. Really swingy, fun melodies. I mean, this is just a computer playing it back for us, but you know, go back to Django, of course. Um, sorry, let me get out this screen here. C major triad. Triads, this is actually, triads are the building blocks. Triads are the most important thing to be working on, to master triads. Many of you know I always say that. Um, but check out the melody here. Just going right up a C major triad. One, three, five, eight. Okay. I mean, there's other ways to finger it. But it's nice to just hold the chord or visualize this. And that's the major seven. It's a very pretty melody if you play this little. And this is an, it walks down eight, seven, f f uh, six, 
And then this now is decorating around the D minor chord. Don't worry about the diminished chord, it's just C. Just think of the first measure as C. The diminished is just a passing chord. But the D minor is nice, this. So the shape. And then listen to the melody. Again, this is gonna be important for us when we're improvising. And this is kind of one of my triad soloing worksheets is you think C major, D minor, C major, D minor. You just go back and forth, C major, D minor, C major, D minor. And then that, and then you put it over this and it sounds great. You're just thinking very simple, C, D, C, D minor. And then it's a great way to improvise, just going weaving back and forth from C to D minor, C to D minor, C to D minor, one measure each. Um, the G7, this G note is being hit and held and suggested here, or really stated. Uh, that, that G note's strong, it's a root of the five, and it's the same thing twice. Let's get the rhythm down if you guys wanna play it with me once. Uh, that syncopation is very, very important. One and two and, and, and one and two and three. One and two and, and, and one and two and three. I don't know how Django fingered the melody, but that's how I would do it. And I'm thinking this D minor shape. So, where you do it here. I'm quoting the song, I Found a New Baby, if you didn't know that. But again, all this stuff is really great for your improvising. Uh, let's put it with Sound Slice. I have it set over here on the metronome down here. If you didn't see what I did here to navigate through this, I put a count in and gives it four clicks. <laughs> and then it starts right on the beat. And one, two, three, four. Do the B section, and I don't think I've ever heard anyone heard that it, from the versions play exactly this. So um, I don't know whoever wrote out the lead sheet for it, um, but that's okay. Uh, melody. Hope everybody got that. Let's look at the the first phrase at least. The first phrase. Yeah, you just want again. I don't want to. This is important, you know, to get the timing, the feel, the phrasing of it. So don't ignore that. Get the, get at least at least get the. The essence, get the character, the signature riff, this. Get that down really well, then you can noodle around around that, if, at least as long as you have that down really well. Um, and then this phrase here is just a nice variation. Let's take a look at it here, same idea, phrase three. Notice it's the melody here is all diatonic meaning it's all just in the key of C, okay? These are all just key of C notes. Even though you do have these chords C7 that has a B flat in it, but it's not in the melody. And you have an F minor here. It's really pretty, you have F minor chord, but F minor has an A flat and it's not in the melody. So kind of the harmony underneath it shifting with the diatonic melody, you know, chosen adds really nice colors to the basic diatonic melody. And then this phrase here, Django uses quite a bit. It's very bluesy lick. Now you do get some color tones here. Oh, sorry, this phrase, there, that G sharp, if I didn't mention it again, it's the lower neighbor tone to the A, which is the fifth. That's why I kept quoting, I found a new baby, because that's kind of the motif. Um, but this lick, you gotta get this lick down to this. Django used it quite a bit. I think Maybell, uh, I don't know 
so many songs. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Here it is low. Two, three, four. So that's a triplet. And I then I, I, I'm putting a slide, just so you know. I didn't draw it in, but I think I will. So I'm sliding to that lower neighbor tone again of the fifth of the C. It's just like a C, C blues riff, essentially. But let me go ahead and, and put in some articulations here. Slide down. There we go. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm just showing, hey, I like to slide this after you get the triplet. Then I would slide back. <laughs> this is, again, just how I'm doing it. Um, being very specific with the articulation. But I'm sure Django didn't like this too, but he would use these two fingers. Probably like that moving around. Uh, but since I have, and most of you probably have function of all four fingers here on the left hand, you can just go. Okay. So hopefully you got that. I'm gonna play it just one more time here. Again, we can, you can loop this later if you don't have it down. It's a great phrase to get one, two, three, four. Notice the syncopation again. Two, one more time. Okay. Uh, for practicing, besides just using the sound sound slice here, I've also got my loop pedal hooked up. That's why I grabbed my electric guitar tonight. Uh, just to show you also, um, hopefully you got that first phrase down. I'm just going to kind of leave it like this. Well, actually, I could just do that. Rhythmic, uh, complex, you know, that's what makes it swing is the syncopation, the off beats. One and two and four, one and and and. Okay, I'll do that again. Here we go. Four, one and and and. Again, there's so much value in learning these melodies note for note. I mean, even just as written, even if Django or Stefan didn't play it exactly like that. Um, so hopefully you now have that. I was going to demonstrate with the loop pedal what I usually do on my solo gigs. Um, solo gigs with loop pedal or just for practicing. I'm sure many of you have a loop pedal, but here it is slowly with a loop pedal. I'm going to lay down the chords once, loop it, and then practice a melody. Again, it's great practicing so that you can be able to just nail it when you're jamming or on a gig. One, two, three, four. Measure five. and practice before but I'm just showing you how you can just loop it and then practice it faster too so looping is a very nice tool to do if you have an electric guitar um, again the B section I'm not too worried about it <laughs> as far as like uh, getting the melody down because I, I listen to it and nobody plays the melody the same way twice so I'm not I'm not even gonna instruct you on it uh, except <laughs> Um, you know, just get, get, maybe get that first part here. This is a good part to get the chromatic D, D sharp, E, and then throw in some lick, meaning just this. And then D9. G9. And then back. So again, honestly, that's about all I would do for the B section, even though it's written out here for you to learn. I personally would not spend time working on and trying to trying to 
do this part unless you want to play it as an ensemble. Uh, but I would ad lib quite a bit there. Maybe I'm lazy, um, but uh, so that's that's what I would do. But you know, again, for um, soloing, that's a different thing. Now I, I would be, if you're wondering what do I do here, I'm thinking F triad, F sharp dim, C, D7, and then on the G9 chord, G7, my favorite trick is to just take what I did here on the two dominant and minor it. So I'd play D minor, and that was D melodic minor, because Ron requested some melodic minor. So G9, I'm thinking D melodic minor to get this flavor. So on the D9, here. I'm going to go back and talk about this for a second. Again, I'm ad-libbing on the B section a little bit here. So I got this. Hmm. C. D9. And I just played a D minor scale, melodic minor scale, but you could just play a D minor six arpeggio. If you're playing the ukulele, you would do this chord here, four, five, 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 which is just D minor six. So you literally are playing a D minor six chord. That's a really great hack. Just turn your dominant lick into a minor. And then you're set. But here, I'm gonna demonstrate this. I know we're kind of coming out of time here. Uh, I'm going to use this B section as my demonstration purposes for the triad study. F major triad. F sharp dim. C major. D. It says G9. I'm going to play D minor. Okay. And then back to the top. So here it is with some ad lib. D, D minor. Maybe something like this. here, F major, down here rather. Uh, when I see this D9 here, I'm also thinking, I know I erased this chord earlier, I'm thinking A minor, A minor six. Same concept as over here, where I'm thinking D minor six, D six, or sorry, D9, a minor six. That means a melodic minor scale. Django's favorite scale, my favorite scale. Okay, this chord, this sound. And then move it up. D minor. Again, that's if that's an acquired taste, I guess, but a lot of a lot of these licks that Django played were off the melodic minor scale on a dominant chord like this. So again, A melodic minor, G melodic minor, if you want to simplify your thinking, A minor six arpeggio, D minor six arpeggio. But what I'm kind of demonstrating here, you can take it as, as complex as you want if you're like, oh, I could do F like this. Yeah, I get it. If you like to play a lot of notes, you're gonna probably be arpeggioing, but it's still you're going F major, F sharp dim, C, A minor six, D minor six. You're just playing a lot of notes of the same stuff, but you're still thinking the sim I like to think simple. F, F sharp dim, C, D. I said D, I was about to play A minor, but again, that's the hack. You can think D and to play A minor. G9, D minor. And then back to C. Yeah, I heard this. 
Um, I'm going to talk a minute about the A section now. That's enough of the B section here. I just wanted to give you kind of just an introduction to some soloing concepts here with tri using triads. Uh, obviously some melodic minor scale too. Um, you can always just do face value if, if, if you don't want to think about the melodic minor scale. Again, you see F major six, you play F major triad. And this is another thing I hope you know your triads everywhere in the fretboard. If not, look at all those studies I gave you for extra practice. F, 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 F sharp dim, F sharp dim, and then C. This is just an exercise. D, face value, G. Just, again, that's just, a, a, you know, practicing triads. Generally, I wouldn't be doing that. I would just stay in one area, F major. F sharp in G, C. Creating these little phrases around the triad. Etc. So, uh, I just want to talk about this concept again, going back to the A section here. I want to, I want to say something that might not be so obvious. Because we're in the key of C major. You think, oh, C major, I'm going to play C major scale. Absolutely. That's kind of the go-to scale. I mean, that's very, very inside, very pretty, very vanilla. Let's hear it. Oh, no, sorry, that was bad because I didn't have my tempo. But what's really nice, the blue scale. scale is minor so you're actually thinking C minor against C major and that's what gives it that bluesy jazz quality that we love that feel-good sound is playing those bluesy licks against the major chord progression so you don't have to we're not in the key of C minor it's not C minor it's a C major song but you can really embrace the flat three that means E flat and the flat seven which is a B flat Again, this is for improvisation. The melody has that pretty major seven in there, but this would be just soloing purposes. Um, so again, C major is this. Blues. And then usually when I mix and match them liberally, I call that the hybrid. <laughs> you could kind of just hybrid scale. Is it is it minor? Is it major? It's kind of a combination of both, meaning this. And you just got to go by feel and really spend a lot of time so you get into each one of those notes and you know what color you're going to get. So that's why you got to improvise quite a bit and, you know, really think about those notes that you're playing. Feel it, hear it, pre-hear it so that you can achieve it. Um, again, I'm just going to do a quick demonstration here. I know we're running out of time. I uh, hope you're enjoying today's first session. I know it's just a lot of me rambling and demonstrating, but hopefully you're enjoying it. Um, and hopefully you won't be shy to ask questions next time too. Uh, so check it out. Here's that A section. Again, I'm just clear my loop pedal. I'll put this chord instead. put out a fast tempo, but I just kind of demonstrate major, minor, major, minor, back and forth. That's one of my favorite things to do in this is just kind of liberally go back and forth from the major sound to the minor sound. Just thinking major ideas, 
minor all off the C root. I'm not worrying about playing every chord change. I'm just saying key of C. Okay, you can throw in some diminished licks too, that sounds pretty good. Django did that. And there I did do the this the triatric C major, D minor, C major, D minor. Okay, just going weaving back and forth. And again, the value of just knowing your triads. I'll show you C major, D minor, C major, D minor. And then again, C major, D minor, C major, D minor, and this. we'd be back at the B section. Hopefully I'm making this soloing seem easy. Um, it, it's nice to have a strategy. I always say strategy, that's my big term now, strategies. It's nice to know your, but you gotta know your triads. Triads are fundamental for this. Uh, and then look at that triad embellishment worksheet if you wanna start to make it pretty. The, all that stuff, that's very, very Django. Um, I'm going to get out of the screen share here, but we're about done for today. Um, any? Did I lose anybody? Did people leave? <laughs> I hope not on the first day. <laughs> but anyways, it, you know, it's just demonstration and for you to see and hear. I think that's important. Um, some of these concepts. This is, and I just wanted to start with a song that has some really basic chord movement. Uh, that's important to, to kind of start. But it's every song is kind of different. They have different progressions. It's just nice to have... Again, start the foundation with that. So I hope that helps you all.